Hey guys, Casey Foster here from NetcodeGuides.com doing a demo review here for Bloodfall on his ESEA pug on Mirage. Um, just want to do a little recap of what he said in his description. He says some games mostly op and some games mostly AK. This was an AK game, so he's saying that he's going to be a rifler um, in most of this game. So um, Obviously, I've watched this demo a few times, and I have some analysis for things you can improve on, things you can do differently to uh, have better outcomes um, in situations. So this position specifically is very important for you to get into a offensive position very early in the round. If you watch any pro player, they run to the left side of the furthest pillar that is here in the halls. The reason they do this is so you can beat that CT player to the corner. Basically, if he's coming around the corner um, from Palace, you have a free AFK shot at him because he has to run towards you to get close to you. So in all of that distance that he's running, um, like right, uh, let me see, like running like right here towards you, he has to run towards you to get close to you to get behind that pillar. So you have all of that distance to shoot at him. But if you're in this position that you're in right now, you're not going to be too successful um, because he can do what he did here and he's in your face and you're really close to him and he's on a, he's using a pistol. Um, your guys' timing ends up being perfect and you run past him. He gets a free... He, he should have killed you very, 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 very easily. Um, but he didn't. But either way, um, you, you, you got lucky in that situation. You, you did get the kill, but you saw how easily he was potentially going to kill you in that situation so um just running to the left side of that tunnel or getting behind that third pillar uh is the play and the reason you do that is so you can get that early information and you don't let him push up close to you um and do what he just did there so add that into your t side strat book that you have for mirage and uh, you'll have much more success uh, on that play so let's uh, go on to the next round and just to confirm um the last part of this video that are the the, the last round that I commented on. Um, so you basically go into the same route. You stay on the right side of the tunnel and you let him kind of get up close to you. Um, you do end up getting the kill here, but he ends up getting about 50 damage off on you. Um, that's, I mean, really not really necessary. If you just ran straight to the left side of this pillar, you would have got a free frag when he was walking around the corner. Um, anyway, that's not the focus of this round here. This is what's going to be the focus of the round here. So the player in sight, Fang, has uh, whatever that gun is, MP9 or something. And he's fighting a dude. You can see him shooting at your teammate at, or you can hear him shooting at your teammate um, by jungle. That would have been the best time to peek. While he's firing his bullet, if you would have just wide peeked him there, you would have got what was called a trade frag, a very, very, very easy trade frag. Instead, you shoulder peeked out. He spotted you, you have all of his attention, and he's in a position where your teammate at jungle cannot get the trade frag. So he basically shot at somebody, got your attention, you peek out, he saw you, and then you you went back in the tunnel, and then you peeked back out, and he too shot you. Um, so to, t to just talk about the concept of that, trade frags are super important in CS. While he's shooting at somebody else is your time to peek to get that kill. Um, Obviously, your teammate did get the trade frag on him, but he really didn't even... I mean, there's a good possibility that he wouldn't have got that trade frag uh, because he could have just stayed hidden behind the triple stack and he would have been totally fine because the terrorists have to push him to get into the site. So, um, two, two options there. Either peek early while your teammate is shooting at him and get the trade frag, or when you peek the first time to just wide peek, or if you really weren't confident in hitting that shot, to just not re-peek because he has all of your attention or you have all of his attention and he's in a position where your teammate cannot push him and trade frag him. So just something to think about while playing CS and give you better outcomes in the future. All right, and here you are doing your Halls play again. Um, kind of waste of a flash because they will see it and then they can just turn from it. So try not to waste that flash. Just do what I said in the beginning of this video where I just mentioned running to the left side of that back pillar or left side of the tunnel. So um, what happens here is you get smoked off in halls and the smoke actually hit you which means that fang obviously you don't know that he's there he hears the smoke hit so he's like oh shoot i heard the smoke hit somebody i'm gonna stand on the back side of this smoke and you threw a nade right in front of him and you 
your silhouette kind of came through the smoke and he got a free frag on you. So obviously you didn't know he was pushing. But what I want to talk about is the information of the smoke. So they threw the smoke there. You are smoked off from sight. There's nothing that you can do while that smoke is there. So there's no reason to be anywhere near that smoke. And the second thing is what that smoke allows them to do, it allows, it allows them to close that gap and get close to you. So distance is a big thing in CS, especially, I mean, obviously it's rifle versus rifle, but you, you don't really want to take these close battle fights because the chances of winning them are much less and you don't, you didn't really have any cover there. Um, you really, once that smoke was there, you kind of just want to fall back and wait the smoke out. That's why people throw smokes is to delay the strat and you didn't really want to do that. And obviously if you see a grenade coming, you want to turn from that as well, not take 40 damage nade, but, um, that's off topic. The, the, the smoke. The smoke play on apartments, you have to just wait those out. There's really nothing that you can do. You're not going to get any information. You're not going to get a kill. You're going to be of no use to your team in that situation. So uh, take that into consideration uh, your next time in a similar situation or even on another map in a similar situation. So anyway, on to the next round. All right, and here we are on another gun round. Your teammate threw kind of a bad flash, flashed you and your teammate, and this dude pushes mid, gets a 2K. Um, this is where you make a small mistake. So... He shot at you once, he shot at you again, and now you're in trouble. He has a huge advantage because he's so far away. You're kind of running and shooting at the same time, which you're not going to have too much luck at or luck with. You have done about 25 damage to him, but you've re-peaked an opera in mid three times now. This is going to be his third bullet. Um, generally speaking, it's not a good play to just take a gunfight with an opera uh, at the top of middle on Mirage. Um, Obviously, he's going to get the kill here, and you die putting your teammates in a you know a four-on-two uh, situation. Want to talk a little bit about advantages in Counter-Strike? Um, Dazed actually just released a video about his philosophy on CT side pistol setups, and basically the whole video talks about him or talks about putting yourself in advantage spots. So the T side pistols are close range guns, the CT side pistols are long range guns. Obviously I'm talking about the Glock and the USP or the Glock and the P2000. And he says, put yourself in advantage spots where you're gonna be able to shoot them at long distance and have the advantage. This is a perfect example of that, but obviously not on a pistol round, but in a gun round. The op is a better long distance gun. It's a, it's a very basic concept. You don't wanna be fighting people where they're gonna have a, a ability to just post on you with an op and then you're trying to fight them with a, an AK like across the map. So basically once he shot that first shot at you, you should have been hiding behind these bricks, waiting for your teammates to do something, get his attention, maybe throw a smoke, get in his face or throw a flash and change your position or simply fall back. Taking this fight right here is not necessary. You guys are up on rounds. You guys were down on men that in that round you don't really want to take a fight where you're at a disadvantage. If you guys are in a five on two situation, yeah, sure. Take that, take that, that AK op top mid fight. But in this situation, it's not a good play. And generally speaking, it's not a good play. So take, put yourself in positions where you always have the advantage. And if you don't have the advantage, don't take the fight. Or if you're in an equal equals position, meaning you guys, no one has the advantage, take that fight. That's fine. So again, just keep this in mind. Don't put yourself in a disadvantage um, taking gunfights and you'll be much more successful All right, on the next round. All right, and here we are on CT side pistol round. Obviously, this is a pug and it's kind of a clusterfuck. You guys aren't really communicating where people are going to go. Um, and they just have this dude's just run free range up mid. He's on cat now. He's about to jump into window room. You guys both have your knives out. Obviously, you don't know this guy's here, and that's because nobody is watching anything. And <clears throat> he surprises both of you guys. Now, this is where you make a personal mistake. You see him shooting at your teammate, and you run away. So you guys were in a two-on-one situation there, and a guy in window room, and he shot about probably 10 bullets at you so far, or you guys so far. And you run away, and you leave him in window room, and the dude obviously gets the kill. Or no, your teammate got the kill. But the... Actually, no, that is him there. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe somebody else came up cat. But anyway, you needed to stay with your teammate there and take that two-on-one fight. It, you're at least going to get a trade frag. Potentially, even you guys just kill him and he gets no frag. So 
you just have to play the numbers with your teammates. You have to play two-on-one crossfire situations. If you're pushing something, you and a teammate, there's only one person there. You have to stay there and take that fight. You cannot run away. Um, so keep that in mind for next time. All right, and here we are actually on the next round. This is an eco round for you guys. You guys actually win this round. I just want to commentate on something you did really well here. Um, it's something a lot of people don't do well, but you do you do pretty well here. Your teammate gets a kill on Palace. He gets the, the, the Ray dude gets the trade frag, and you trade frag back that guy. So now you guys are in a, obviously, your teammate got a kill on the other side of the map. Uh, I think it was in mid. And you guys are in a four-on-two situation here. You guys trade, you guys went one for one on the, the Hall players, and you guys ended up coming out on top um, as your teammate got a kill, and then you got the, the refrag on him. So now you guys are in a four-on-two situation, and you get a nice shot off, a nice dink, an instant dink off on that dude right there. And and I don't really recommend running to this new spot to go and, and chase that frag because he could have been posted on you. You didn't know, but he ends up pulling out a nade, and you get a really easy kill on him. Great job. Played that really well. You guys are up in numbers. That's a frag that you would want to take. That's a situation right there that you would want to take that advantage. Um situation and to get the kill and you guys do and you're rewarded by winning an eco round um pistols are really strong in csgo you guys got the kills won the round great job great positioning and great decision making in that situation all right and here we are this is where you make your first of three same mistakes in this game um this comes from not knowing the timings on the map um, you're running into connector from CT spawn and you have to know that they're that they can beat you to that position you did get the kill on the guy top mid but you were surprised by the guy below you and he got a really easy kill on you with a pistol um, you have to know the timings on the map you have to know that when you have the best spawn in CT spawn and you go running through connector or through a site into connector like this you will never beat the terrorists to the corner um, they can already have crossed or they could have already crossed into site or not site, uh, the top of mid. And the, the the biggest problem with that is is you stayed there a really long time. Um, he got real close to you and basically closed the gap. I don't know what this guy is doing. Is he lagging or something? Um, he closed the gap on you and got a really easy pistol frag. So you just have to know the timings of the map. You have to know where you can like beat people to like when you're crossing a site that terrorist with the best spawn can almost be there and shoot you as you cross running towards your connector with an op um actually i think this is yeah you do the same thing again this round so we're gonna let these these uh two rounds play out um you do the same thing running straight to connector you kind of do a pause there for some reason and this guy should have free fragged you, but he didn't get the kill. You were surprised you had to flick shot to him. A flick shot people think, you know, is, is cool. A flick shot means you were not anticipating the bad guy being there. And the reason you weren't anticipating the bad guy being there is because you don't know the timings of the map. Um, you have to know that they can beat you there. So, you know, that just take that into consideration and you will have much better success. You can see you almost... You almost died, not from this guy here, but from the, the mid-ramp guy, but you landed the flick shot. So uh, we're going to go on to the next round. All right, and this is something I've noticed a bit throughout the demo. You tend to over-peak things a lot. Um, I don't know if it's because of the confidence or just you tend to not do things. But first of all, the crosshair placement isn't really the best right here. Obviously, you're above the stairs now. And if your crosshair was in the right place, you probably would have potentially killed this dude on the first shot here. Um, but you have to correct your aim, which takes time and you didn't get the shot and you're kind of just you're also moving and shooting at the same time so your bullets aren't really going where they're at uh but the big the big problem here is the over peaking you peaked that dude three times um and he basically just got to the point where he knew that you were just going to continue to peak so he just pre-fired the spot and you ran right into his bullet um this is this goes hand in hand with taking fights um in situations where you don't really need to you guys are up in numbers you guys are in a five on three situation and um Repeaking that dude right there just gave him the ability to kill you. Um, obviously, you potentially could have killed him as well, but when he's standing still and you're just moving up and down like that, you know he's just going to sit there and shoot the same spot that you're at and and get the pre-fire on you. So, I think that really potentially costed you guys this round and a few of the other things um, that are going to happen later in this demo uh, potentially cost you the match as well. So, 
we're gonna go on to the next round now. This is actually the last time in the demo that you do this, uh, but this is the third time in one half in one match where you are surprised by a terrorist uh, or surprised by a bad guy. Um, Ray just ran straight down mid. You're staring at the top of mid, expecting them to be crossing, and he gets in your face and gets an easy kill on you. Um, it goes it goes back to knowing the timings of the map, but the ultimate goal, your the ultimate. Um, concept here is to not make the same mistake twice it may sound very elementary or very basic or, or very common sense but a lot of people don't really think too much about it you know you made you've made the same mistake three times in one half in one match and and you you came out on top one of those times but it was a mistake and he you did get the kill but you shouldn't have um, you pretty much never want to make the same mistake twice no matter how small of a mistake it is it, it will cost you a, 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 a death, a round, a half, a match, a tournament. Some point in time in your CS career, one little small mistake will cost you um, uh, a big, big, big problem, a big something. Um, and Counter-Strike is about minimizing mistakes. It's about knowing a whole bunch of little things in the game, like don't throw the smoke here, don't run into this spot, don't peek this, don't do this, do this, flash here, always flash this, always nade this, always know the timings of this. Um, it's it's about a whole bunch of little things and not making a very and a bunch and not making a bunch of small mistakes. That's the difference between tier one pros and tier two pros in this game is the tier two pros make some small mistakes here and there but the tier one pros make zero mistakes or they make one or two mistake in entire in an entire match um and that can be the difference between winning and losing so that's because they've played this game for so long and they always have the mindset that i never want to make the same mistake twice and i'm not going to so keep that in mind learn the timings of the map and if you die in a certain situation and you don't feel like you did anything wrong it might be the wrong play so keep that in mind all right and here we are on another gun round um you're opping halls here from stairs. Your teammate pushes halls, dies. You obviously know one's there, so you're going to watch it. Now, I'm going to pause it right at the right time. Now, this is a mistake. You're looking into a small hallway from a very far distance. You have... Uh, it's hard to explain, but basically, the further you are away from an angle, the easier it is to hit like that pixel shot. So, your crosshair placement is ultimately the what gets you killed here since you're far away you want to put your crosshair i'm going to show with you my mouse you put your your crosshair would probably want to be in this area like up and down this this bar here would want to be about right here because he's either going to run across and wide peak to potentially look at like sandwich or something or to check up close halls he's going to wide peak and run across your screen which you potentially could hit that shot if your crosshair was here but since it's here it means well, it's also a little high. You're looking at maybe the tip of his head here. Um, with an op, you generally want to have the crosshair like chest area to get the you know the 100% shot, not try and go for a headshot. But the next thing is how far your crosshair is away from the the, the this wall here. Um, you're anticipating a headshot, but it's very unlikely to hit the head. He can run across and wide peak, and you would miss that shot as well. Or he's going to shoulder peak, and you're going to miss that shot as well. Or you're going to have to correct your aim very quickly and get a flick shot, uh, which is very tough. You, you 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 pretty much never want to try and land a flick shot because a flick shot is because, or you you end up getting a flick shot because you were not expecting the player to be there, and you have to correct your aim, which is decreasing your chances of getting the kill. So we're going to play this real quick. He's going to shoulder peak, bang, one shots you. If your crosser was on the wall, while he's peeking out, you would have killed him, 100%. You're going to see him, you're zoomed in, he has to, like, his eyes have to scan a few things at the same time. Obviously, he shot you very quickly, he's probably a decent CS player. Um, you, your crosshair placement got you killed there. You have to know where to put your crosshair um, in situations. If it was the mid, if it was like, say it was the top of mid on Mirage and you're on the left side of, of Winter Room, you're going to want to put your crosser a little bit off of the wall because they're going to run out strafing full speed and you're going to want to kill them on the cross versus trying to take that real close pixel peek um, on the side of the wall where they're going to crouch peek you at the same time. So um, posting on him, having your crosshair in the middle of that hallway got you killed. Work on your crosshair placement a little bit and we're on to the next round. All right, and this is actually the last round of the pug. Uh, you guys do a pretty good job on the retake. Um, you guys trade the frag, blah, blah, blah. Just to recap some things um, that you need to work on and to recap this video a little bit, um, 
I'd say probably the most important part that you need to work on right now is not getting surprised. Um, two things are going to help you do that. Learning the timings of the maps and having the mindset that you don't want to make the same mistake twice. You got picked in a lot of situations um, where you were just surprised by where the bad guys were at and that came down to you not knowing the timings and then you also not getting the information as to where the bad guys were at. One example would have been the dude in mid when you were in connector and you had the op a few times and then the other example is when you were on T side and you were in halls or palace sorry um, and the CT was able to get close to you with the pistol. You did get the kills in a certain in a few um, a few of these times but you really needed to be in a different position to get that information so you don't get surprised. Um, another thing you can work on a little bit better, especially with the op, is your crosshair placement. Um, it was a bit bad with the rifle in some situations as well. Um, you pretty much always want to have your crosshair where the bad guy is going to be, even if you're even if you're pretty much 80% sure that there can't be a bad guy there. It's always good practice to have your crosshair in the position where they potentially can be or or are going to be. Um, going to be meaning where they're going to run or where you're running around a corner and you're clearing something you want to have your crosshair where they're going to be um the next thing is taking fights that you don't need to um a perfect example was that when you were in top of t mid on mirage with or top of t mid on t side you had an ak in your hand um you were fighting a guy in window room who had shot at you three times with an op you don't want to take that fight you want to take the fights that you have the advantage and you want to put yourself into scenarios where you have the advantage um so again don't take fights you don't need to um, another thing, super big thing in CS, just a general concept of CS, don't make the same mistake twice. I know it's harder than it, I mean, it, it's easier said than done, but you have to have the mentality in your head at all times while you're playing CS. If this guy kills me here and he's killed me again there, I may be doing something wrong. I need to not do that. I need to do something differently. Um, the last thing, but not least, is got to get that info. Um, every player in Counter-Strike can get better at this. Um, obviously, not every player in Counter-Strike, the top pros are pretty good at it, but every, generally speaking, every player can get better at this, is getting the information as to where the bad guys are at. Um, if that means pushing to a spot to beat them there, to get the information, if they can push you or not, you have to do that. Um, if it means waiting out a smoke and letting the, the CTs push you or flash or nade or something, you're finding out where somebody is or you're finding out if they're not there. That's information that you're going to get in the game that's going to help you win rounds. Um, and generally speaking, you're going to be more successful if you are getting that information. And... Um, oh, you guys actually don't lose, don't win the round. You didn't have a kit. Okay. Um, getting that information is super important and it's... and being too passive at times got you killed so i hope this demo review helped you i hope um anybody who's watching this that's in a similar kind of spunk or rut um i hope you learn from something from this as well um, again this is casey foster from netcode guides um, if you guys want to have your demo reviewed we just reopened the demo review section on the website so go ahead and send them in guys anyway thanks for watching